It's June 2nd. Is it June 2nd or is it June 3rd already? No, it's June 2nd. Okay. Finally, I'm right in the day and I know that date and I said it correctly. Yeah, this country is, uh, uh, it's, it's blown my mind. It's creating brain damage for me. It's overwhelming. It's just, it's incomprehensible. Yeah, did you hear this? And before I play it, let me just say, isn't one of the, or ask, isn't one of the symptoms of dementia that you lose your short-term memory, but your long-term memory, wow, that comes back in focus and you're kind of living decades, decades, decades ago. Maybe that's what happened to this guy. If I'm right, if that's one of the symptoms. The data shows young black entrepreneurs are just as capable of succeeding given the chance as white entrepreneurs are. But they don't have lawyers. They don't have, they they, they don't have accountants, but they have great ideas. Does anyone doubt this whole nation would be better off from the investments those people make? And I promise you, that's why I set up the National Small Business Administration that's much broader. Is they're going to get those loans. The data shows. What do you say to this? I guess we just don't have any black entrepreneurs in our country. Hmm. They don't have access to attorneys and accountants. Are people actually listening to this and believing what he is saying? Are they? Wait until Joe Biden finds out black people are lawyers and accountants. Uh, But, well, wait until he finds out that there's a lot, a whole lot of black entrepreneurs here. This uh, 30-year-old entrepreneur, he, this, I hate when these sites, they make your scrolling very fast. Entrepreneur opens first black-owned 7-Eleven in Las Vegas without any investors. And you know what? I bet, I bet he either got advice from an attorney, probably had an attorney check out his contracts. I don't know. Meh. You know, what What these people are doing, they are, it, this, this whole Black Lives Matter, critical race thinking, uh, theory. <laughs> theory, Carol. Theory. See, I told you. I'm getting brain damage. All right. Oh, my God. You know, it, it's, it's a gaslighting that is so abusive, but it's also so demeaning. Black entrepreneurs, man, they have ideas. They just don't have the ability to execute those ideas. Oh, I guess, you know, our black Americans are just, mm, they're constantly needing, you know, that leg up from the white, you know, the, the, well, the white privileged people. Okay, black Americans are not stupid. And a whole lot of them are actually entrepreneurs. They're entrepreneurs. Yeah, so here, this just came up uh, in my search. But um, how about a black whiskey entrepreneur will help bankroll others like her? You go, girl. Ah, whiskey. Um, oh, Forbes just, uh, they just listed an, oh, this was back in 2020. Oh, send this to Biden. Black in business, celebrating the legacy of black entrepreneurship. A legacy? Oh, my God. Wow. Well, you can just scroll on down and see Nick Cannon 
Renaissance man mogul in the making. Yep. Okay. Robert Smith, the founder and CEO of Vista Equity Partners. Five billion. Oof. David David Stewart once watched his car get repossessed from his office parking lot. Today, he's the billionaire founder and chairman of IT Provider Worldwide Technology. David, you got to call our president and let him know that I guess you had some attorneys and accountants. Oof, $3.5 billion. Man, oh, man. Oprah, our good old Oprah, yay! Your net worth is only two point seven billion. Oh, you better get to work, Oprah. Michael Jordan. Well, many of these sports stars and celebrities have spawned off a whole lot of businesses. Jay Z, but. Here, 1821, 1906, I bet there were a few more than just the one listed. But you can check it out. Ah, Robert Johnson, founder of Black Entertainment Television. How'd you do it, Robert? Well, it was a lot of hard work, I guess. Yes, the nation's first black billionaire. Huh, Ruth Simmons. Ah, uh, yes. President of Brown University, sworn in. First, she was sworn in as the president, the first black female president of Smith College. Boy, did I admire that woman until I found out she was sitting on the board of Goldman Sachs. Oh, boy, Don Peebles first African-American to develop and own a major luxury hotel. How did these, how did they do it? And they do it so quietly because we don't really hear, you know, from our president about all of these entrepreneurs. We don't, do we? Why? Well, because... I guess they're rewriting history and giving us a narrative that has an agenda. Oh, right. Yes. Okay. Uh, the sun is coming in the window, and I can't even see the top of my screen. Hang on. Here we go. So, how about 25 black entrepreneurs you need to be paying attention to? Oh, okay. Here we go. President and co-founder of Moving Analytics. Did I miss one? Yes, founder of Plum Perfect. Chemical engineer. Hmm. How did you all become so successful when we're so, so racist as a country? Oh, my God. It's amazing, huh? Well, you can check it out. A whole lot of... Very smart, very talented, very successful black Americans. They're right here. Here, Angela Benton, Culver City, California, founder and CEO of Streamlytics, founder and CEO of Sproxel, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Wow. Oh, look, Clinton. He's standing next to a black American who is an entrepreneur. Clinton, get on the phone with Biden. Let him know. Yes, sir. Indeed, founder and CEO and president of Beauty Bakery Cosmetics Brand. Well, she is quite beautiful. Um, there's a lot, a whole lot, a whole lot entrepreneurs who somehow got in touch with some, I don't know, attorneys and accountants, and well, here they are. And they've done quite well for themselves. How'd you do it? You all need to 
band together and call that guy named Joe who's sitting in the White House and snap him out of his long-term memory. That seems to keep him stuck in, I don't know, the 50s, even though there were black entrepreneurs in the 50s, but surely not as many as we have today. Maybe we should tell the uh, Department of Education that, oh, there goes my door creaking. Hang on. Okay. So maybe we should inform the Department of Education, you know, that's forcing the critical race theory, you know, where whites are the oppressor and non-white, you know, black, brown, um, people of color are the oppressed. White people keep them down and, well, they can't achieve anything because they're oppressed. Maybe we should inform the Department of Education that somehow an awful lot of black Americans, well, they they fought that white oppression and they got through and now they're successful Maybe. What do you think? Our country. Tis of the sweet land of misery. Yeah, a lot of them. A whole lot. Somehow, they were able to just pull their bootstraps pull their boots up and they just kept knocking down all of those white people who were trying to keep them down and they fought and they won but no doubt they're very hard workers mm. hard workers work hard Okay, well, I have a lot of pages open, and there's not too much overlap of these entrepreneurs that we have in our country. And, yeah, historically, sailmaker and abolitionist James Fortin, Paul Coffey, whaler and merchant, Thomas Jennings, first African-American patent holder. Stephen Smith, lumber business owner. Clara Brown, laundry tycoon and gold mine investor. Lewis Temple, blacksmith and abolitionist. Lunsford Lane, enterprising salesman. William Littesdorf, real estate mogul, and trade aficionado, aficionado. And of course, Frederick Douglass, the North Star, political activist, author, entrepreneur. There's well, if I were to go into each individual, then this, this video would be hours and hours long. 18 of the most awe-inspiring black entrepreneurs. George Johnson. He got a job at a cosmetic company owned by S.B. Fuller. Full of brush? Don't know. Anyway, I'm tired of all of the lies. I'm tired of all of the crazy people. I'm tired of all of the abject bullshit that keeps sinking us and sinking us and sinking us into a more insane world 
Our society is so sick and twisted. <clears throat> Escaped homelessness, became a stockbroker. And many had the kind of background that you wouldn't expect. Like Oprah. Somehow she made it to become a billionaire, well, three times over. There she is again. I guess our most famous black entrepreneur. Well, black entrepreneurs and executives' profiles. There's a lot. Hmm. How did they do it? How did you do it? You must have had a leg up from white people. How friggin' demeaning. How unbelievably demeaning is our president. Page one of 22. Next. Hmm. Wow. I don't know how. How it is possible in such a racist country that you all became a success. Well, 22 pages. You can you can click on the link below and check it out. The 10 hottest black tech entrepreneurs in Atlanta right now. Well, this was 2019. Jasmine Crow, founder and CEO of Goodr. Goodr. Okay. There you go. Entrepreneurs, 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 entrepreneurs. They just... Ma'am, we need your ideas. We need your ideas. We need them ex... Oh, they were executed? Oh. 100 Black Tech Titans. Not just in Atlanta... But all over, all over. First woman to receive a medical patent. Wow. Well, it seems that facts and evidence just doesn't. Now people can just say whatever shit they want, <laughs> and voila. I guess it's true. Well, it's not. It's not. Tech Titans. Wow. <clears throat> we are in such trouble. Now, wouldn't it be fabulous? If Biden got up there and honored, honored all of these Americans, all of these Americans, you know, showcase them as powers of example. No. Nope. He's still going to be lying. All of the young, you know, white, black, whatever color, they listen to this and they actually believe it. And then they're out screaming, screaming about how racist our country is. It's amazing, isn't it? Don't you feel like you're living in a profoundly, uh, just pathologically dysfunctional family? You know, the greater family? I do. I do. Every friggin' day. 21 influential black professionals in tech. I guess he doesn't read the newspapers. So, all right. Just want to tell all of you black entrepreneurs, you know, that can't find a 
an attorney or an accountant. And if you want to go based on, you know, skin color, uh, you can, because you you don't know how to do this. Um, well, there's a thing called Google, and you could put list of black lawyers, and then, oh, they come up with an awful lot of, I mean, black attorneys or black lawyers, right? Uh, yeah. Go to the American Bar Association and you'll see, wow, man, how did that happen? So many black attorneys in our country, in this racist, systemically racist country, holding black people down. How did it happen? And, yeah, accountants, you can do the same. Okay? And if you don't care too much about skin color, you could just you know, list of accountants. Then there'll be more of your, you know, choosing. Okay. Could we, I don't know. Uh, I think this man really, really needs to sit out his time. Oh, but that brings in Kamala. Kamala. That means if we don't bring in, let's say, oh, who's third? Oh, Pelosi? Um, okay, Biden, you can stay in. There's no good choice. When you become so profoundly sick and twisted as a nation that we are, there ain't any good choices left. How dare this guy say what he just said. But it's living in America. <laughs>